welcome to my class today we shall discuss another story related to partition partition means a partition refers to the partition of india into india and pakistan a large number of people were affected by partition estimate reveals that more than 1.1.2 crore people were in some way or the other affected by partition that's quite a huge number and uh, women were the worst sufferers let us read a story lajwanti by rajinder singh bedi and find out what information it gives on partition the leaves of lajwanti wither with the touch of human hands lajwanti you must have seen the mimosa plant it, it's a kind of lajbanti is a kind of mimosa plant its leaves are closed when you touch it its leaves are closed it withers dries up with the touch of human hands this is what a punjabi folk song says after the great holocaust when people had washed the blood from their bodies they turned their attention to those whose hearts had been torn by the partition so great holocaust obviously refers to the partition partition of india into india and pakistan so after this great holocaust people had washed the blood from their bodies now they settled down pakistan uh, you know the muslims went went over to those muslims who wanted to go over to pakistan they went and settled in pakistan hindus they came back and settled in india now this is something that happens after the partition is over now they turn their attention to those whose hearts had been torn by partition in every street and by lane they set up a rehabilitating committee now many people were affected by partition the violence that occurred during partition many people were killed there was mental trauma people were thrown out of the place where they had been living for generations together they went over to a new place there there was a lot of hopelessness there was a lot of despair there was a feeling of helplessness they were separated from their families women were raped even the neighbors neighbors raped you know those they knew earlier so the trauma was quite heavy now after the partition people settled down and they formed a rehabilitating rehabilitation committee in the beginning people worked with great great enthusiasm to rehabilitate refugees in war camps now suppose you are you are a rich person you are staying you had five uh, uh, acres of landed property you had bullocks you had oxen uh, you had cows and uh, and you were very rich you were living at a particular part and then suddenly you were thrown away from there and you went over to the other country and there you were turned a refugee you were you were not a you know you were not a person who belong to that country but you were accepted as a refugee so look at the menta the the effect that it would have on the psyche of a person on the mind of a person but there still remained the task of rehabilitating abducted women as i told you many women were abducted raped mutilated killed butchered massacred killed in large numbers so rehabilitating abducted women that that was also an important task those that were recovered and brought back home and over these they ran into difficulties the slogan of the supporters was rehabilitate them in your hearts so this was the most important part of the slogan rehabilitate these people in your hearts right it was strongly opposed by the people living in the vicinity of the temple near the temple of narain baba narain baba is a place people oppose this one how can we rehabilitate those people who have already been abducted raped mutilated 
suppose they come back how can we rehabilitate them place them back in the hearts okay our committee says that we must rehabilitate these people but how can they 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 be treated with the same respect and honor with which they had been treated earlier so let us find out what difficulties the women faced the campaign was started by the residents of mula shakur that is a place residents of this place mula shakur they set up a rehabilitation of hearts committee a local lawyer was elected the president but the more important post of secretary went to babu sundarlal who got a majority of 11 votes over his rival rival is opposition it was the opinion of the old petition writer and many other respectable citizens of the locality that no one would work more zealously than sundarlal so zealously means with a lot of interest people opined that this person would work with a lot of enthusiasm with a lot of interest there would be nobody who would work with more interest than babu sundarlal why he would work with a lot of interest what was the slogan what was the motto of these people rehabilitate the women in your hearts the women who had been affected who had been victimized during the partition rehabilitate them in your hearts that was the motto of the committee so and uh, what was the name of the committee rehabilitation of hearts that was the name of the committee why sundarlal was selected as the secretary because amongst the women abducted during the riots and not recovered was sundarlal's wife lajwanti sundarlal's wife had been abducted and she had not returned till now to her husband so obviously husband knew the pangs the suffering that he had to go through the husband had full knowledge of full understanding of the pain the suffering that he had to go through after his wife was abducted the rehabilitation of hearts committee daily took out a procession through the streets in the early hours of the morning they sang as they went along whenever his friends rasalu and nekiram started singing the leaves of lajwanti wither with a touch of human hands sundar lal would fall silent he would walk as if in a daze as if as if uh, he was dreaming as if he was lost hmm. so whenever the name of lajwanti was mentioned he found himself in great trouble great pain great suffering because it was the name of his wife where in the name of god was lajwanti this thought would come to him so where was lajwanti was she thinking of him would she ever come back and his steps would falter on the even surface of the big his steps would falter he would not be able to walk steadily on the paved roads on the pavements on the roads concrete roads he would not be able to walk steadily he would walk out on steadily because why did he walk on steadily at the thought of what his wife might be going through right she has been abducted she is now staying with somebody else she is now staying or she might have been murdered if she was not murdered whether she would come back would she ever come back or not whether he would be able to find her or not now these questions troubled him Sundarlal had abandoned all hope of finding Lajwanti. He had made he has he you know Sundarlal had you know he had lost his hope. He had lost he was completely hopeless. He had become hopeless. He had made his loss a part of the general loss. He had drowned his personal sorrow by plunging into social service. So social service was a medium through which the sorrow could be lessened a little bit. now if you stay back at home all the time and something wrong has happened to you you constant you are constantly reminded of that particular thing so sundarlal now that 
he was moving around the streets, he was roaming from one place to another, he was a part of a group. So that was a way, that was a method by which he could lessen his sorrow, his sorrow lessened a little bit. So he had drowned his personal sorrow by plunging into social service, even so, whenever he raised his voice to join the chorus, he could not avoid thinking, how fragile is the human heart? So human heart is, is not, it breaks down quite easily. Human heart is something, it breaks down. You can't forget the sorrow that you have gone through. You, can, you can't forget the painful experiences easily. Whatever painful experiences you have gone through, you cannot forget them quite easily. Human heart is very fragile. It breaks quite easily. Exactly like the last one thing. Only one has to bring a finger close to it and its leaves curl up. So just as the leaves of the mimosa plant withers, closes, when you touch upon touch, similarly a human heart breaks quite easily. He had behaved very badly towards his Rajvanti. He had allowed himself to be irritated with everything she did, even with the way she stood up or sat down, the way she cooked, the way she served his food. He had thrust her at every pretext, condition of women. This is the condition of women. Huh? So, when you lose something, when you lose the possession of something, you understand its value. Now he understood the importance of Lasvanti in his life. So he is saying, when she was living with her, he had been greatly unjust to her. He had allowed himself to be irritated with everything she did. She was unhappy with her, with everything she did. The way she stood up, the way she sat down, the way she cooked the food, the way she served his food. And on every pretext, he would beat her. So it was as if he just needed an opportunity to torture his wife, to demean his wife, to exploit his wife, to treat her, to ill treat her, not to treat her, but ill treat her. Right? His poor Lajo, who was, a, who was as slender at the cypress, life in the open air and sunshine had tanned her skin and filled her with an animal vitality. She ran about the lanes in her village with the mercurial grace of dew drops on a leaf. Her slim figure was full of robust health. She was slim but robust, very strong and stout. Very strong, robust. Very slim but robust. When he first saw her, Sundarlal was a little dismayed. Surprised? But when he saw that Lajvanti took in her stride every adversity, she had many good qualities also. She took in her stride every adversity. Adversity is a difficult situation. She dealt with the difficult situations gracefully, with a grace, with a certain amount of grace, including the chastisement he gave her. Even, even though he rebuked her, even though he abused her, he didn't take things, she didn't take things to heart. She always dealt with these adversities of life, the difficulties of life, the problems of life in a graceful manner, in an elegant manner. He increased the dose of thrusting, beating. He was unaware of the limit of human endurance, how much a human being could tolerate, put up with. He didn't know that when Lajvanti was living with her. And Lajvanti's reaction were of little help. Even after the most violent beating, all Sundarlal had to do was to smile and the girl would break into giggles, smiles. If you beat me again, I will never speak to you. That was what she would say and she would forget about the beating, she would forgive her husband very easily. So she would only say, 
only one thing Sundarlal had to do, he had to give a smile. And whenever he smiled, Lasbanti broke into giggles. She responded with a smile. Lajo forgot everything about the thrashing as soon as it was over. All men beat their wives. Right, as if it is a right with the husbands to beat their wives. If they did not and let them have their way, women were the first to start talking. What kind of man is he? He can't manage a cheat of girl like her. So women, it was as if the motto goes like this, women are needed to be thrust. As if, you know, the uh, you know, male ego that you are a uh, you are the husband, you are the you are a male member, you are the head of the house, you have every right to beat somebody, beat your wife, especially your wife. So if you do not beat your wife, there is every possibility that she would she would go astray. Right? She would not obey you. She would not have, you know, allow you to have your way. She would not have respect for you. They made songs of the beatings men gave their wives. Lajo herself sang a couplet which ran somewhat as follows. I will not marry a city lad. City lads wear boots. And I have such a small bottom. Right? Try to understand the meaning of these two lines. I am not going to marry a city lad. This husband is very fine for me. This man is fine for me. At least he doesn't have shoes. Right? So, jadi tara shoes thaan tha, shoes ni samata adhi ka vade thaan tha. So, now that he doesn't have shoes, he beats me with his hands. And I have very small buttocks, shoes are bigger than buttocks. Right? So, you know, the way he makes fun of, the writer makes fun of the society, the uh, chauvinistic mindset, male superiority, male ego, uh, he makes fun of them. Nevertheless, the first time Lajo met a boy from the city, she fell in love with him. This was Sundarlal. He had come with the bridegroom's party at Lajbanti's sister's wedding. His eyes had fallen on Lajwanti and he had whispered in, in the bridegroom's ear, Your sister-in-law is quite a saucy morsel. Your bride is likely to be dainty dish, old chap. So if your sister in, uh, you know, Jatavale Ame Gute Mane Jiyoku Deku, who is very attractive, Mane Taku Ame, Degenerate kari vaku, what a term use karu mal. Hala ki? Toh what a disrespectful hai ikra amajim te odiya reka, eh badhya mal hai chai. What a disrespectful, we don't understand that this is quite disrespectful. That we are boys, we can go on telling whatever we want to tell others. So he, you know, whenever Sundarlal's eyes fell on Lajwanti, she said, he said, in the bridegroom's ears, Are, your wife must be a nice woman. A, your wife must be a nice lady. Look at your sister-in-law. She is such a nice, she is such a beautiful one. Ah, she is sussy, attractive, so attractive. The words went to her head. She didn't notice the enormous boots Sundarlal was wearing. She also forgot that her behind was small. Her buttock was small. Now, now that Sundarlal appreciated the beauty of Lajbanti, even though it was in a negative way, even though it was in a negative way, she forgot, she fell instantaneously in love with him. And she forgot about the enormous boots, the huge boots that he was wearing at that time. Ah, she also forgot that her buttock was small. Such were the thoughts that coursed round Sundarlal said when he went out singing in the morning procession. He would say to himself, if I got another chance, just one more chance, I would really rehabilitate 
हॉर इन माय हार्ट नाउ ही वाज रिपेंटेंट रिपेंटेंट फीलिंग सॉरी फॉर द मिस्टेक्स द सिंस ही हैड कमिटेड सो नाउ ही अंडरस्टैंड्स दैट बाय डिसरेस्पेक्टिंग हिज वाइफ बाय डिजेनरेटिंग हॉर बाय नॉट गिविंग हॉर नॉट ट्रीटिंग हॉर विथ डिग्निटी एंड रेस्पेक्ट ही हैड कमिटेड अ मिस्टेक सो ही सेज if i now he is praying god oh god if i get another chance just one more he is so desperate he is saying you know just one more chance god please give me one more chance i would really rehabilitate her in my heart i could set an example to the people and tell them these poor women are not to blame they were victimized by lecherous rabbisers lecherous having sexual desire excessive sexual desire and who are the ravishers those abductors those who abducted women those who ran away those who took away by force women and raped them they were ravishers so actually he he tries to understand the situation it was not the mistake of my wife or it was not the mistake of people like my wife right whose mistake it was they were victimized by ravishers those people who tried to harm them what can a poor woman do a society which refuses to accept these helpless women is rotten beyond redemption and deserves to be liquidated and he also believed that <clears throat> if we do not want to accept such women who have been victimized right तुम्हें तो निजे गोटे जाशुण कि क्या सागर पल ओके यू कैन फाइंड फल्ट विथ वोमेन ऑन दिस बट तुमको जो आबडक्ट कर तुमको जो हरण चाल करा बै फोर्स यू हाविन टेकन आवे तो से वाई सुड यू ब्लेम अदर्स वाई सुड यू पुट दि ब्लेम ऑन दि वोमेन हाँ सो दि आबडक्टर्स आर टू बी ब्लेम एंड इफ द सोसाइटी फेल्स वेन दि ओमेन हेज नट कमिटेड ए सीन वेन दि ओमेन हेज नट कमिटेड ए मिस्टेक् if the woman comes back we should accept her that was what he believed he agitated for the rehabilitation of abi he agitated for the rehabilitation of abducted women and for according them the respect due to a wife mother daughter and sister in any home he ex- exhorted the men never to remind these women of their past experiences because he understands these women who have been abducted by force taken away by force they must have gone through harrowing experiences painful experiences and these experiences are going to sit in their minds for all the time to come so they need they are you know they need to be treated a little gently with love with affection so that they can forget whatever they had gone through of course it will be difficult to erase erase is to completely remove the ex- the pain of the experience the sorrow the sadness the grief it would constantly remind them if you if you remind them hey where did you go what happened with you it is as if asking a rape victim again and again acha how how did he rape you are that that happens to everybody so rape is not a very exciting experience so by constantly by repeatedly asking the same question you are giving you are causing more pain to the victim your questions are in no way decreasing her pain erasing her pain removing her pain so he exhorted the men never to remind these women of their past experiences because they had become as sensitive as the lazwanti and would like the leaves of the plant wither dry up close when a finger was pointed towards them so if you constantly remind them of such experiences they would wither in order to propagate the cause of rehabilitation of hearts the mula sakur committee organized morning processions the early hours of dawn were blissfully peaceful no hubbub of people 
movement of people was restricted. Very few people came out of their homes in the morning hours and that too early in the morning. There was very little cloud. It was very peaceful, calm and quiet. No noise was there. Very little traffic was there on the roads. Even the street dogs who had kept an all night vigil, they had kept awake throughout the night. So they were fast asleep beside the tandoors, hmm, where tandoor was cooked the previous night, the previous evening. People who were roused from their slumber, slumber is sleep. Those people who are already got up by the singing, they would simply mutter, they would say, oh, the dawn chorus. And they would go back to, to their dreams once again. So people, that was the time, the time which they chose for the procession was early in the morning. They found the atmosphere, they found the surrounding quite peaceful, calm, quiet and peaceful. So people would listen to them, listen to their song, they would get up, they would say, oh, the morning chorus, oh, the group has come once again. Okay, and then they would, they would not be bothered by their presence. Okay, they would go back to sleep once again. People listen to Babu Sundarlal's exhortation sometimes with patience, sometimes with irritation. Women who had had no trouble in coming across from Pakistan were utterly complacent, like overripe cauliflowers. Their main folk were indifferent and grumbled. Their children treated the song on rehabilitation like lullabies to make them sleep again. Lullabies are lorries which mothers sing to make a child or make their children sleep. Those people who had no trouble in coming from Pakistan, for them crossing the border and going to the new country was not a dreadful experience. It was not a harrowing experience for them. They had not been raped. They had not been molested. They had not been ill-treated by the male members. So for them, ah, it's a normal thing. Why are these people disturbing us in the morning hours? It's a difficult experience. And the main folk, their main folk were indifferent. Because once you go through a particular experience, you understand what pain is. So if you have not gone through the experience, you say he is unnecessarily or she is unnecessarily creating a scene. So these people believed that Sundarlal and his group of supporters, they were unnecessarily creating a scene. Right? 